everybody how y'all doing crystal bubbling here and i just had a great evening with some homegirls not like that you're a pervert not you the one behind you he's nasty anyway um had a great night hanging out with my homegirls we went to a screen of the help that had a q and a with the screenwriter tate taylor um one of the producers and the director and Octavia Spencer, Viola Davis. Is you mad? Be mad. Because if I was you and I didn't, I'd be mad. Oh my God, oh my God. And it was just phenomenal. The movie was great, of course, but you know that. But Octavia and Viola were so warm and welcoming and their conversation, it, it was just, it was just, it was wonderful. I didn't ask any questions because I was so in awe and I was busy getting you some video. So, first up, um, it's a little bit cut off, but I got most of it. So, first up, here is Viola Davis talking about her role in The Help as Eveline being her first lead role. You had an Oscar nominated for Doubt, so you were the most known person coming into this movie. And I'm saying, like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Because really, I'm like probably a lot of unknown character actors out there that have done their one scene in the movie that you're like, oh, that girl, that black girl, that black girl who's like an Antoine Fisher. That's me, you know? I, I came in as the known actor who didn't do much of anything, if that makes any sense. And it's really important to remind people of that because Sometimes you have to kind of reveal the big white elephant in the room to people. Yeah. Because otherwise yeah. they can fool themselves into believing that I'm out there churning it out <laughs> as right. an actor. Right. Right. You know, so they can fool themselves into believing that there's tons of roles out there for people mm. who look like you. Look at you, you got an Oscar nomination for doubt. One scene. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you so when you were on the set of the hell then when what you're used to in films is coming in for four or five days just doing it and going home. Did you have to, how did you get the stamina to do this or was that, was, is that where stage experience comes in handy? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, stage you're doing eight shows a week. Yeah. You know, I've done eight shows a week. I, I've done one play for a year and a half. Yeah. I've done plays for months where I never left the stage. So, you know, you're doing 29 days, in a movie yeah. shooting three and a half months. That's, you know, relative. But yeah, I'm I'm the actor and so is Octavia. You used to have now one or two scenes where you're like, um, so uh, you know, he went that way. That way. <laughs> you know? And you're trying to squeeze out every bit of the <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, you had a lot of juice to squeeze in this one. So with this being your first leading role, did you ever feel an intense amount of pressure? And, and how did you how did you all deal individually with the situation? I'll tell you when I felt the pressure. I felt the pressure when we first started shooting, and for two weeks I had no lines. Oh. That's when I felt the pressure. I felt the pressure. And I say this, I sound redundant, but I don't care. I'm going to just say it. I have a quiet character. I have the only character that is not flamboyant on this screen. And I'm sorry, you have, what color are you going to look at if it's on the screen? A bright blue, a bright green, or just a monochromatic gray? You know? Um, I have the character that probably is representative of every ordinary person who existed in 1963, which is a person who looks completely ordinary on the outside, goes to work, comes home, pays a bill, but in the inside has a crap load to say. And after two weeks of being in that bridge club scene and not saying anything, just listening to all that conversation, I'm thinking, nobody's going to see my performance. I'm going to be, once again, that black girl in the background, and people are going to say, 
what? Isn't that that girl from Dallas? <laughs> <laughs> and this thing, she's the lead? I was worried. I was in a panic, you know? Um, but at a certain point, you have to trust that that is who the character is. You have to trust that that's who the character is and that people who come into the theater are going to at least extend themselves and get it. And then I just hope that they got it, you know, with the voiceover, with, you know, it, that, uh, you know, I felt like with Abelene, that was people that their way in. Mm -hmm. right. So I had to trust it. Yeah. Yeah. For me, actually, I, I did have uh, fear because many is from a different time and very foreign to me and her beliefs. If you didn't notice, I have a lot of white people in my life. <laughs> Many didn't. And it was very difficult to be in such an oppressive mindset. It made me a very angry woman. And um, I realized that Minnie was alive and well when um, I, I couldn't uh, put my finger on what it was that I was upset about when people would, I'm a southerner, when people would come to say hello, normally you say hello and it's a great thing. But I realized I was walking in my character's shoes because I constantly had this chip on my shoulder when I was there. I, I didn't like the town while I was filming. And when I went back, I loved the town. Yeah. <clears throat> so I realized I was really walking in, in her shoes. But the most beautiful thing that helped me out of that were those weekend barbecues. Yeah, because when you live in a black and white world, whether it's, um, or let me not say black and white, because when you live in a, a, a world that is so divided, and if you're just immersed in that and don't have a way out, it can really, really overtake you. And I never wanted any part of who I was to change as a result of that. I just want to follow up on what Viola was saying. Was it a bit of strategy on your part to schedule those bridge club scenes at the beginning to kind of ease her into it, or is that just the way it happened? It's just the way it happened with actor availability and, and, and yeah, it's scheduling. It's just the way anytime you work on a movie, it, it, as these guys will tell you, it's, it's we were shooting a lot of, of movies. We shot over 150 pages. And uh, we had to, we had to, we had to, we had to roll, and that's just the way it happens sometimes. I mean, sometimes people get to sets and they have to shoot the climax of the movie the very first day. It's, it's mind-boggling how it happens. But to our credit, we all we tried to do a lot of it. And like Emma got to her very first scene, she got to shoot her getting the job, mm -hmm. uh, which is funny because it was my first scene to shoot, and it was my first studio film. It was for Emma's first lead in studio film and her character was getting a job and it was kind of cool. It worked out that way. We didn't really plan that, did we? To that degree. But yeah, Vola, but I mean, to her credit, yes, so Jane. damn good. <laughs> Pour that tea with, with layers I cannot believe. So she wasn't just pouring tea. You can't keep your eyes off of her back there pouring That's the tea. Right. Yeah. There's so much That's mystery. Why? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now this guy asks where Octavia and Viola got their inspiration to play these characters because they're not as old as, you know, that period in time in which the help was set in. And I, it's a part of our history and the biggest lesson, well there are quite a few lessons that I learned from the help, but it's one thing to learn about something in school. And it's a whole nother thing to read about something on the internet and all the research that you do. It is a whole nother ball game to walk it and live it and breathe it and bring it to life. So all the preparation, all of that was great and working with Tate and, and, and our brilliant casting crew. But a lot of it is um, being in the moment and bringing all the baggage in with you. I'm thrilled that that wasn't my uh, upbringing. But I am also honored to know that it existed 
and I'm honored to know that this movie is opening the eyes of a lot of people, especially those young kids back there. So you don't have to have experienced it. You just have, you have to appreciate that it happened, and you certainly can't um, revisit history and, and rewrite it as if it didn't. No, you did a good job. It just was so real. I thought that you did. <laughs> well, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Wrap it up. Thank you. Oh, Ellen, do you want to add to that? Do you want anything you want to say? <laughs> Were you asking me that question? <laughs> <laughs> I'm you can answer it. Because you're so young as to, to get that realism, uh, the intensity, the emotion. Exactly. Especially the silence, the uh, exactly. oppression. Uh, this woman in front of me wants to ask my all the same questions. She's a junior trained. I know my mother. I know my grandmother. I was born in Singleton Plantation, St. Matthew, South Carolina, the plowed fields. You go down the Singleton Plantation, you see the big white house. You go further down the road, you see the one room church. And then you go further down the road, and there's my grandmother's house. That's where she delivered me in 1965. I know my mother. I know what her hands look like. I know what her life was like. All those women who were born in that time period led hard lives. Led hard memories. And you know what? I have to tell you it's something my mom said too recently. They don't talk about it. You know? And I find that one of the things I appreciate about Abilene is that she was ordinary. Yes. That oftentimes the only part of our history that we want to acknowledge are the parts where we won, mm -hmm. where we overcame, yes. where everything was smooth and easy and we stood up to oppression. What about when we lost, when we were broke down, when we had dreams and we had hopes and we went to work and was trying to get along? My mom started having children, got married at 15 years old. You know, eighth grade education. She's able to mm -hmm. You know, that's what I know. That's my life. Right here. I have a In the movie, she gives out the money to the help, but in the book, she keeps the money. So, um, no, she it out. No, no, in the book, it doesn't say she it out, so I just want to know this. She does. I'm ready five times. I said it's definitely 15. In fact, I got the math wrong. The captain got it wrong. She divided how she divided it up. Okay. This is the first book. The rest of the books are just give out the rest of it. I mean, she gave out the money and she also split. Um, you miss Myrna money with April. And it ain't so that job. Oh, wow. Okay, in the back there, yeah. Yes. Um, I was wondering, oh, I was wondering what message or messages you all wanted people to take away from the film. As a writer and director, I think if everybody did this wasn't supposed to be a message film, really. It was, for me, it was about relationships and courage. And, and I mean, some people said there wasn't enough history, there wasn't enough violence, there wasn't enough this or that. But, but, but yeah, but for me, it was about relationships and the courage within yourself to speak to someone you're not supposed to or think you're not going to have any common with and find, find a way to find common ground and, and change. So, Speaking from my, my point of view, it was about authentic truth and relationships and what happens when, when that is shown. I, I think for, for me, that's the beauty of art, that there is no uh, one particular thing that you have to uh, uh, pull out of it. There are many things. There's a plethora of things. I learned so many things from this movie. It has changed my life in so many ways and he'll tell you i'm i always thought of myself as a realist i saw things exactly the way they were because of 
being this character, I am now an optimist because, and I, I've said this, I, I, had to, I wrote about my experiences while I was on the set, and we always look at it from the glass is half empty, the glass is half full. Many would look at it and say, well, thank God I have a glass, <laughs> you know? And that is the difference. And I'm all about thanking God I have the glass. And that's the difference of who I am today versus who I was before I started to move. Can, can you share with us your thoughts about putting Mega Evers in the movie, the whole thing? Uh, you know, you're thinking on that. Well, I mean, you, you, you had to. I mean, it, it was a part of, it was, first of all, part of the book. But what I found so interesting was the fact that you have two different groups of people fighting the same battle. You have Megger who, with great courage and risk, was challenging the systems as the, you know, the NAACP leader. And he was in the neighborhood of these two women who had no recognition, no, no recognition, and, and, and were equally doing something in their own way um, as risky and challenging and probably, you know, if the book had not been a success, it could have lost their lives and no one would have ever known where they were. They could have been that, that person who was just found dead in a ditch. Um, and so for me, I love the parallel of that. I love I loved Maggie Adler's news conference being on the television with, with James O and, and, and Pascal Gula in the background knowing what was going on and just thinking, wow, I love, that's what the movie's about. I mean, God bless Mecker and Murley and, yeah, and right. all the people of, of notoriety that have done this, but it's the quiet, unheard of or unseen hero in all of us that, black or white, that can affect the greatest change. And that's what I wanted the movie to be about. But, but you had to show that girl as well. Finally, Viola told us that she was 46 years old. She's wanted to act since she was about eight. And this was her first starring role. So a young lady asked, what do you say to the aspiring actresses in Hollywood, specifically the black actresses? And that's a whole nother video I'm going to do for you guys. Um, but she asked her what advice would she offer them? Um, and actually she asked the whole panel, but I was so in, in to the conversation, I didn't record it. But Tate said, if you never quit, you never fail. And Octavia said that the key was to have like-minded individuals around you. And um, she shared how she's known Tate, the screenwriter and the director, God help me, I can't remember his name, for years. And she said, you know, we've all shared the same $500 because Tate would write something and get paid. And I might ask to borrow the money and he'd pay me. And then I'd book something and then the director would need to borrow some money. So I'd lend it to him. And they would known each other for years. The writer, producer, and um, director that were there were all friends with the writer of the book, Catherine Stocker, Catherine Stockett, and they all grew up together in Mississippi, and they were all Caucasian, irony of ironies, and um, Viola and Octavia first met on this set, and they said they formed a great friendship along with the rest of the cast. They even posed for pictures afterwards. It was such a great night. I am so inspired. I hope you are inspired, whatever it is that you're doing. And thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe. Please like this video. Comment. Make sure you check out the website, crystalbubblin.com. Follow me on Twitter. Um, and uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.